we get to build part five, and while you're thinking it's the video, for me it's, oh yay, another build day. It's been a tough work week, and I've been getting ready for today. Uh, we left off where I drilled the four holes for the engine, and now we're going to prepare the rest of the box before we treat it for smoke oil and fuel. Um, we don't want that soaking into the wood, delaminating it, or getting glue joints undone. Um, I've also set up a bunch of stuff to build uh, as the next step is the fuselage. Let me pick up the camera here. Try to keep the vertigo to a limit. Alright, I've got the ignition ready to go. I've got it wound to help keep it from uh, fraying when it, if there's any friction. I've got a mount to help keep it together. I've got a couple of balsa pieces ready to go and I'll explain that later. I've got the exhaust system together, the smoke pump on its bracket ready to go, um, fuel dots, uh, you gotta learn, or you gotta fuel the plane. I'm going to be installing some of these Ernst plugs that uh, will help have a nice clean look when you're putting your upper wing on and plugging it in. Uh, one of the tricks that I use when I'm doing all these servo connections is, you'll see here, it's a piece of heat shrink and you can get it in the Dubro package here. It's 3 8 inch diameter and I just cut a piece in half and each half works really good at keeping your servo connections together so you don't have to worry about them coming apart in flight. And then I opened up a fuel tank package and this is everything that you get well, minus this stuff. Um, you need to read the instructions also. Oh, this didn't come with it. That's an extra piece that I bought. I'm going to be doing a three-line fuel tank. Um, one clunk goes to the carburetor, one clunk goes to the um, fuel dot, and the third one is a vent line. Um, in the instructions, it has a special note to make sure that you're right, using the right stopper. When you open up the package, it comes with the stopper for the nitro fuel. You want to make sure and change that out to the one that's safe for your diesel and gasoline. Also, it comes with a neoprene hose. We can just carry that right over here and put it in the filing bin. Not needed for these big gassers. Um, I'll be using this clunk for the fuel dot, and then I bought a nice ceramic clunk that stays, it's got a little bit more weight to it, so it stays in the fuel more, and it also holds the fuel close, so you're less likely to get air bubbles going into the carburetor. Um, so we'll be putting that together in a little bit, and I've got two of those to do. You got to have one for fuel and one for smoke oil, and uh, then I've got my extensions laid out where the elevators and wings come on. I like using these little yellow um, servo clips. The, they're easy enough to take on and off if you have to take the plane apart a lot or maintenance stuff. It's not as permanent as the. Uh, um, heat shrink, but it's not, well the heat shrink isn't exactly per permanent either. Um, these clips are made by Parsons Products and you can get them for High Tech, Futaba, and JR Servos. Um, they're a handy thing to have around. So, let me get the uh, engine bolted up on here and I'll show you how I marked my location for my throttle and my fuel. I'm going to go ahead and drill those out right now while the engine's off and then I'll show you how I got those measurements. Okay, so what we're looking at here is the firewall from the top and uh, I've got the four holes that we drilled before and I went ahead and drilled the hole for the throttle push rod and the fuel line. 
Now, be sure you don't bolt your engine on upside down, although it looks really cool and kind of like a hot rod with the carburetor on top. These engines get installed carburetor down. Trying to keep it light and humorous. We can get our bolts in there. Now what I like to do as a temporary thing is I use the T-nuts but instead of putting them in to where they're going to be locked in permanently I use them as a fender washer as well to temporarily bolt the engine on while uh, I set everything up. Let me get these. The first one on is the one that really holds it so you can get the other three screwed down. And then we'll take the Allen bit here and just snug it down. I'm not cranking on it. It's not a permanent install yet. I just need the engine to be in its place so that we can line up where we have to put our canister mounts and, uh, like I said, install the fuel line and throttle linkage. Take the camera off the tripod again. And if you look straight down the carburetor, you can see the linkage right here, and there's the hole that I drilled. It's a line of sight, just drill through there, and that's where your push rod will go, and then figure out your throttle servo mount. Um, for mine, I just cut a hole in the bottom here where the bottom of the servo will hang out and it comes straight through the firewall. Now the fuel line, you've got this nipple coming off the carburetor and I just went line of sight, that's about right to there. The fuel line's flexible, so it'll go through there without a problem. And this is also a good time to drill your holes for your ignition box. I'm going to be mounting mine on the side here. So I'll get holes drilled and uh, figure out the exact placement here in a second. It's important when you're mounting these to use protective foam rubber. It, it is prone to vibration so you want to kind of isolate that. And then I secure it with a couple zip ties just right to the side of the engine box. Let me set up the tripod and we'll get to that. Alright, got the tripod set up. I've got my foam rubber piece here cut to fit the back of the ignition box. And I'm going to put this through as if I'm putting it on the plane and get this in the position that I want it. And then use my pen here and just mark roughly the center line, top, bottom, left and right. And then when we're done 
treating the engine box and we're going for the final install, just use a couple zip ties and you can zip tie it straight to the fuse in a crisscross pattern. Then it's not going to shake fore and aft or up and down and it's on this foam rubber so it has a little bit of vibration dampening right there. So let's get the drill and we'll make those holes there. Then I take my little ream right here and kind of deburr the corners, smooth it out. We don't need it cutting our zip tie. Okay, so then next, what we're going to do is I've cut a couple balsa wood blocks because one of the things has to be done is you want to seal up the top. We're going to seal off the area where the exhaust goes as well, but to complete the engine box, let's go ahead and do that. So I've got just a couple square stock pieces cut to fit that I put right in the top, and that's just to space the, the curved piece out away from the um, firewall. Um, on this model, the cowl ring would, needs this space in order to get the cowl on. Uh, this is one of the joys of modeling, is you get to f overcome obstacles, engineer new things, and build it and put it together. I love the problem solving and construction. And this piece was fairly easy to make. I lined up a small piece of paper on the back side of the top of the firewall here and just traced it. and I could slide it back here then. And now, you can see there's a recessed area here for the lip of the cowl to come over and drop down so that it can bolt up against the firewall. Let me go ahead and get that C8 in and we'll be back in a little bit. This part of the build is almost my favorite part. Um, I like that that you have to be in, uh, have some ingenuity and create things, um, kind of fabricate what you need. There are all kinds of exhaust mounts out there to hold your canisters. Um, they make metal clamps that wrap around this. Uh, they make wood clamps with uh, dampers. Uh, they use silicone tubing. Uh, I like to just use regular hobby plywood and I cut a circle a little bit larger than the diameter of the canister and wrap it in smoke oil tubing that's heat resistant and that's been working pretty good for me. You slide it over the canister and it fits snug 
right where it's supposed to, and that's to hold, help support the weight from the flange on the engine. As it's vibrating, you don't want, you want a weak point, so you put a mount here, because if it's just sitting here hanging, it's going to fall off and do bad things. You'll have a bad flight. So what I want to do is get the mount back in here and install the canister into the mount and bolt it up to the engine. This stuff's really cool. You've got headers out of a high performance billet machine engine. Oh, love it. And we come back to one of my favorite adhesives. I like to use Gorilla Glue to make sure that it, everything stays put. But we have that couple hour cure time. So what I'm gonna do is put a little dab on one of my cute tip sticks. 